Okay, welcome to episode 10 of Almost in Agreement. Um, AC is out saving the world, so we're going to talk more shit about him like we did last week. Um, it is the 16th of May, 2020. Word. The world is starting to open back up and the fights that go along with it. Um, we actually just had some group text talking about um, AC's work and, and bagging people. I heard on the uh, on the on the radio's podcast that I listened to today that apparently like 90% of patients that go on ventilators die. So basically, what my the, the in, what infers to me, and this would be another AC question, if somebody wants to text it to him, um, we'll see what his answer is if he can answer is. Is it essentially the pay if if you're bad enough to go on a ventilator, you're pretty much done. So that ten percent survival rate is actually a good thing, or is it that the ventilators just don't do? I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like the ventilators can't do enough if you're already that bad to need to be on the ventilator, or is it the ventilator is actually just kind of pointless? And that was my kind of thought. I mean, eventually, I mean, if they're putting on a ventilator, meaning they're not able to breathe on their own. So they're putting them on that ventilator to keep them alive. So, I mean, I'd, I'd say almost when you're thinking of putting them onto a ventilator, it's not necessarily your last case or your last I mean, resort. Yeah. But, but I mean, I, guess, I don't know. I guess that stands to the question of, like, why do we need so many ventilators if they're not really doing much, I guess is what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, if it's – everybody's talking about they need more ventilators, need more ventilators. Well, you can have 10 million ventilators and – 900 or 9 million of those people you put on are going to die anyway. So what do you need that many ventilators for? I don't know. It's a, it's a crapshoot question. I just, it was just a thing I heard and I thought it was an interesting hot take on that one. Um, I mean, uh, I, I would guess the same reason you've got defibrillators. I mean, you're not just going to be like, Oh, well, usually when your heart stops, you die. Yeah. I, I, yeah. If, if 10%, if 10% is a win, then I'm cool with it. I'm just, I was just, it just sounded kind of defeated in 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 theory to me. It's an odd story. I guess. It sounds like they're either debating or they've they've looked into the possibility of putting. I think maybe just two people on, or essentially having two people share a ventilator, and looking at the the risk reward of of doing that. I just don't want to be the person switching the the thing back and forth. What do you mean? Your breath. Your breath. Your <laughs> breath. Your breath. You hear breath? That would suck. Are you sure? Well, I'm assuming you would just crank up the volume to two times. Oh, you said you said with co- right? Not, not in general of how many people want. Right. Beds. I mean, your question's so good. Okay, so so Max text AC the question um, that I was kind of asking. Uh, quote: uh, Not just including COVID, what is the survival percentage of people that get put on vents? I had said ninety percent of people that go on vent die. Um, yeah, to clarify my own statement, it's the, the stat that I heard was 90% of COVID patients that go on vent die. So it's still a valid question either way is if 90% of normal, I mean, it goes back to the stupid freaking prone, the rollover thing that AC is so pissed off about. <clears throat> it's a normal thing. Like if 90% is a normal stat or if 10% is the normal survival rate of people that go on vents and that same rate is applied to COVID patients, then it's not a big fucking deal. And it's kind of a it's kind of a sensational stat to put out, which doesn't sound out of character for the media. Or it is different, and it's something that's actually worth talking about. So we'll see if he's got time to answer that. Um, what else is going on, guys? Um, political shit. Yeah, lots of political shit. I tell you what, the more they interview Biden, the more I'm like, that guy has no the shit he says like. He, I think he's getting worse and worse. Honestly, he seems like he's like the your old grandpa that you're talking to. He's like, oh, just saying shit out of his ass. Yeah, it does. I mean, like I, I, you know, I, I made some cheap shots a couple episodes ago, and AC got kind of pissy with me about it. And it's like, dude, uh, I mean, you know, this that this is his job. I mean, that is what he's a professional at is getting in front of people and talking. Now Trump sucks at it for a different reason. Um, I'm, I'm I, texting I, yeah. back on that. I, I, I did like that, that Biden came out and said, you know, hey, if you believe Tara Reid, you know, that was solid. Don't, I agree don't vote that. for me. I, that was like, solid. You know, if, if, if I believed her, I wouldn't vote for her. Yeah, I, I mean, mean that was, was was that his choice or was that it, was you know, a political advisor? I, I, I would say know. that that was the whether again whether it was him or not. Given the stance that the that the left has in general with that kind of situation, that is probably the best answer 
he could have put out. Like as far as a political make a statement on the topic thing, that is probably as good as it gets. Because I mean, anything else, and no, she's full of shit. That is so anti, you know, the Me Too that they've been a big part of, um, and all that other stuff. So I was, I was, it was, it was a very solid political answer. Believe it or not, it doesn't matter. I mean, I don't know. I just found that I, I thought that was a good political answer for sure. Um, but yeah, he's just, just he doesn't seem. Like I mean, he, well, and honestly, I don't know how they're going to do this stuff. Like the like my my Hornberger, the Libertarian Party's been doing a bunch of like virtual debates where they'll put a Zoom meeting together with the five candidates and they'll have a moderator. And I mean, it's just a normal debate. It's just on Zoom instead of in person. I'm curious, you know, with all the talking about mail in voting and all the different like structural changes to how this campaign is going to go because it's going to come back pretty soon. I think we're going to get back to work as far as the politics of life go going to start coming back to work pretty soon i'm curious if they're going to start doing president like they're going to do a virtual presidential debate or they're going to put them on either side of a 20-foot stage i mean ufc play there was a ufc huge ufc ticket last weekend and i I think it's going to come down to what's going on like a week to two weeks prior to uh, a supposed yeah but i kind of take offense to the whole male voting male and voting yeah because like i mean are we a sexist yeah I mean, females. <laughs> We're not talking about female voting, just male voting. Like it's bullshit. It's, it's man. the patriarchy at work. That's why it's called male. I, I don't yeah. see what the the whole big deal was with against it. I mean, there's some stuff, and I can't remember what it's called. There's there's some stuff that Absentee goes on. Absentee ballot. Like, well, a buddy of mine, um, we just posted on Facebook. He was like. We already have a system in place for absentee ballots and overseas voting because there's already a mail-in ballot setup system. But so, it's, the onus of the, it's the onus of the person that needs it to go out and do it. And I, I'm assuming you're only allowed to do that in certain circumstances. But but what what but his point was that the system's already there. It's not like we have to invent a new system for you know. Absentee ballots. Like, we just have to ramp up the amount of envelopes. And it, yeah, exactly. Ballots. But it's not so like, that, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? We already do it. But the question but, really is, I think the question and why I think the Republicans hate on it, um, is that if the census didn't send the letter to your house with a very simple, here's how you reply to the census, log on to this thing, go, go, go. It's real simple. You, there's a code on it, which I'm assuming a, 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 some sort of mail-in voting system would be similar, is that it's by... By making it in your face and easy to engage, it brings in voters who wouldn't normally put forth the effort. And you know, there's there's both there's two sides of that for sure. But I mean, to me, there's there's a good argument to say if you're not going to put the effort in to research the candidates anyway, and on top of that, you're not going to put the effort in to go to your local polling district, which is, I mean, mine personally is right here i could it's 200 yards from my front door to go poll that's just happens to be where you know i am to my my voting center but you know it's i don't know of anybody i don't know that there is enough space out there unless you're like super rural that going to the ballot boxes that should be that big a deal I don't know. I, I, I'm completely talking about my ass in that one. Okay, so AC says since he started and before he arrived, he's told only two patients who were COVID positive and then vented were discharged home. Both of those patients were and over nursing home patients, so they may not count. Huge psych history, a ton of meds, almost if they had died. <laughs> Oh, so yeah, okay, so they're, they're okay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, that that ninety percent is true. So then the follow up, all right. So yeah, the next reply from AC was, put more simply, if you are COVID positive and are vented, you are unlikely to survive. So why are we wasting ventilators? Right. So my my follow up question is, so is that also true for non COVID? Vented patience. I'm sure this is a weird episode to listen to with <laughs> us reading our own text They're messages. Like, didink, 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 didink. What was I saying right before that? Oh, the voting thing. I just, 
I don't know. Like I, I, it, I find it curious that people have a hard time voting. I, I took more issue to whenever it first started. I mean, it, it came about because of this whole COVID thing, and they had primaries that were already scheduled. Right. So I'm assuming, you know, the, the issue came up. It's like, well, you know, we have this kind of mail-in voting option. Why aren't we looking at it? I took more option to Trump's immediate response was, no, you know, the whole, there's all this cheating that's involved in it, and that just opens up the door to cheating. You're right. There, there, which, which, yeah, it, I is, don't is fully a fair disagree, statement. But he, made yeah. it, but he made it out to be that if we did that, now I, I, I'm pretty sure he even said that, you know, all the Republicans would lose everything. As well, if he was trying to say that yeah. only Democrats were going to try to cheat the system. and No, you have, you like, know. I'm like, yes, there'll be people out there that may try to cheat the system, but to just w- flat out say that we don't want to do mail-in voting because all of a sudden, I mean, he flat out said the Democrats were going to win if we did that. Well, the, okay, so here's the Republicans a question. would lose power right. if we went into. So here's a question on that. That's is, just going into it, perpetuating his voter fraud, which many multiple reputable sources have come out and said that it is not what he tries to make it out to be. Well, the question, I guess, would be to kind of flesh out the point of that is, as a percentage of the populace do, or as a percentage of of party-affiliated voters, do a larger percentage of Republican voters go out and vote, or do a larger percentage of Democrats? So if they're, so 300, 330 million-ish Americans, so 160, just bad math, but because it'd be more Democrats by number anyway, but just for simplification so half so 160 165 million um democratic voters 165 million republican voters there's a higher percentage of those 165 million republican voters already come out and vote well we and only that, have like 50 to 60 percent of I voter turnout look and, right. no, i looked it up it's like 50 to 60 percent the highest was obama's first term right and that i mean and again that's that's that is something that the the republicans kind of hang their hat on they have to is that lack of voting is good for them and yeah you have you have half the country actually electing but you have the whole country bitching about what's going on right you know well it's like what i mean it was like 64 to 62 million or something like that was the hillary the popular popular vote. vote hillary won by a couple million but it was like 60 something million for both of them i mean that is half that is less than half of the entire population. I don't know. I guess that's I mean, how much is under voting age. I would say like a third tops. So like um, a sixth. So a voting population. So it's probably like 60, 70 percent of the total voting age population. Well, is Trump voted. trying to say that if we do mail, mail in ballot? Well, I mean, well, I don't know if, what he's saying. Um, like if I had four ballots sent to my house. And my two teenage kids that I that are 18 that I know are not going to go out and vote because they're 18 and don't give a fuck. Right. Do I send their ballots in? I mean, that's what he's kind of thinking. How that's how that's going. But um, I think the real reason, you know, is Trump's probably worried about the people that are not going to make the effort. Exactly. To go out. And I think then, that's a know, Republican stance in general. Is what I'm getting at. It's not just a that, Trump. That, thing. Yeah. So the the. Uh, the Democrats, the I don't want to say poor people, but the the people that are not going to get in a car or don't have a car and are not going to make that effort to vote, now they can just send it in. Yeah. And so then they're going to get more of that Democrat vote. I mean, I think that's I think that is absolutely true, and I think and I think he's saying for voter fraud, but what he means is I don't want minorities and poor people to vote. I think that's. That's disingenuous in concept. I think it's, I think he doesn't, he, I, he, I think, I don't think it's a minorities or poor people. I don't think it's a class or a, a race issue. Oh, I it's think definitely it's a, a class issue. No, I, I think it's a, uh, I, I think it's a party issue if, if, if anything. It, I don't think it, I, 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 it could be, but I think it's, I don't think it's him saying, you know, brown people and poor people voting. It's people that will vote democrat that are usually too lazy or don't give a shit enough to take forth the effort i, I don't I think it's a there were some states that changed they were switching up holidays i thought there was i heard some states i know some states were talking about it but i want to say some states actually switched to giving people an election day off versus giving people another holiday oh, like holiday memorial day, day or yeah, like memorial day off huh. which i'm for because i 
I mean, I don't think I've ever taken advantage of, I mean, the couple times I've gone and voted, I've never tried to, like, leave work. I've never had, but it. that's what I'm saying. I've never had an issue voting uh, with work. Like, either, I mean, I've never Go worked. Go on your lunch break or. Right, I've never had, I've never worked a straight nine to five, but. You know, they usually open a couple hours before nine, and they usually close with enough time to get off of work and get there. You know, I've never, I've never had an issue voting, and then usually, no. But you, you think law of averages like that? Someone that is working a nine to five, so they've got their choice to try, try to go before if if the polling places are even open before work, which means majority of people that are working, that's the times they're going to. They're either trying to go before work, during the lunch break, <laughs> or after work. But do you think do you think we're still in a world where nine to five is the normal schedule? Nine to five. See, I had that argument with somebody a while back that said majority of, I would say a majority of the country does not work nine to five. I think majority works nine to five, but I think a majority of the people work a a standard waking hour shift. I don't think you have as many third hour shifts. Workers. Well, if you if you count, I mean, weekends, I think that's if you count all the shifts on weekends. I think and that's then you more that's count second shift and third shift put together. It, I would say it's more than. I think people working people. third shift have the biggest argument for it being hard to vote because that's their sleep time. You know, get off, of, get off, get home, get to bed, and that's the window when voting would take place. I, but, but yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I mean, well, there's early voting. I mean, there's like it's not just one day that you can vote. Like I always try to vote early voting just so I don't have to be like, oh crap, it's election day. I got to make time. I always right. try to vote early so. I mean, it's weeks. You have yeah. weeks of a day you can go. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, yeah, even when I was working a job that I didn't have the freedom to do stuff, I'd never had an issue. Like, when I was in the restaurants and stuff like that. So, back, AC said, um, you said, so it's, so is that true for COVID vented patients? Meaning, do, he said, he was saying that they're unlikely to survive if they're put on a vent. And you said, well, is that, true for non-covid patients and he said absolutely not i mean my wife was on a vent and she's alive so i mean that's at least uh yeah but i think she falls under that list that she could probably have an a-bomb fall on her and she's gonna survive too <laughs> probably she's a tough she's cookie just... <laughs> but uh she's crazy so yeah but i i don't i, I just don't i don't i i, I find it I, I to to quote an ac overly used word is I find it disingenuous to say that it's that hard for people to vote in the current system. It's mm -hmm. it, it is it is a minimal effort. It is effort. It's effort above waking up and going to work as normal, but it is such a minimal amount of effort. I may again maybe that's just us and where we stand and what our how our voting works for us locally, but I've never had a hard time if I wanted to vote, like I've had it where I got up and was like, shit, it's election day. I don't fucking care. And then went to work and missed it. But that was just me being lazy, not that it was difficult. <clears throat> well, and, and if you compare like the, um, on a presidential year, you know, the percentage being 50 to 60% vote. And then on, on a non-presidential election year, like 20, 30%, it's so much lower because I think people want to, I don't know if they want to walk around with the, I voted sticker on their chest or something, but I think there's a lot of people that are like, it doesn't matter who I vote for. You know, I mean, how, how much is that is okay. Yeah. In Tennessee, yeah, it's hard talked, to get, yeah. it's hard to get a Democrat elected. So if you're a Democrat and you know, there's not really a way that there's good, you're going to get somebody elected. Are those guys going, well, it didn't really matter if I vote anyway, because I'm not going to make a difference. But if you have, you know, 50,000 people saying the exact same thing. Yeah, you could make a difference. Yeah. But I don't know. People like to bitch. People like to complain. People like to be like, oh, yeah, stupid person's elected. Did you right. vote? No. Right. No, I, th I think a lot of people do feel like their vote doesn't count. I think I texted one about it. I'm trying to remember the exact phrase of what, they're, what they were called. But essentially, I guess there's some states where a part of the electoral process, they're one of the, I guess they're actually voted in or elected an elected official as an elector to cast their ballot. Right. But there are some of those that aren't required to actually vote for the party that was voted for in that state or area. Right. Ten by Tennessee, popular vote. Tennessee is right. Well, I mean, it's on the ballot here and it's like Jim Gray pledged to vote Donald Trump. 
Yeah, so like here in Faith, Tennessee, faithless electors, I think was what what the term they're called. Because they're not, we voted that person in, and when you vote, you are giving them a suggestion on who they should vote for. But there are senators and congressmen that can vote opposite of what their state suggests. And then because there's not, you know, when you, when they talk about how many, you know, votes this state gets and how many votes this state gets it all has to do with those people obviously i you know i took uh what is it political science so i know the exact terms but <laughs> <laughs> but there's some states that have to and there's some states that don't have to right and in my understanding of that i think that turns the electoral college system on its head oh absolutely if, if, it does yeah if, if you've got a state that and apparently there's legal battles going on right now in certain states as to whether that elected official has the ability to still vote for their conscience versus voting for what a majority of the state but 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 if somebody does that if let's say you know um who's our guy um what's her name fucking dumbass bitch Marsha. Marsha, 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 Marsha. She voted. So if she, if she voted, she voted for more spine. If she, she voted for Democrat, or if she voted for a Democrat, to if she voted for Biden when the the president election comes along, there's no way in hell she's probably going to get reelected. So there is that on them that if but you're when not, it's Joe Schmo, that's the one that concerns me because I mean a lot of those people are no name. I mean, as far as I understand, they're they're just random people that are. I guess most of them are usually like, uh, like party figures, like Republican, I don't think like so. Tennessee. I don't, I don't are you sure? I thought it was all senators. No, 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 it's not senators. Yeah, no, it's like uh, the the electors. Yeah, are they're usually like I would thought they were like yeah, a like sign from Tennessee. There's like what thirteen or something. No, it's like and who are those people? Am I, see, about a ago. Again, I graduated with a master's in political science, <laughs> <laughs> poli sci. <laughs> So, so well, let's, let's explain this. So, there are thirteen in Tennessee. Who are these thirteen many, people? Yeah. Oh, here, let me let's hear. Let, uh, let me. Let's, hey Siri. Yeah, exactly. Internets. Stupid bitch. Uh, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I'm not talking to you. So while you're looking that up, you want me guys to uh, tell you guys a funny ass story? Oh real shit! Quick? No, hold on, time out. This is creepy. How do we? How do we see? Google fills in. Choose electors. They're spying. She was. They're spying. Siri was listening. Although ballot lists, the Google answer is although ballot lists the names of the presidential and vice presidential candidates who run on the ticket, voters actually choose electors when they vote for president and vice president. These presidential electors in, ter- in turn cast electoral votes for the two in office. All right. That's the headline of it. Um, uh, national poly- Oh Yeah, go on to another topic. Let me okay, while you're looking that up, I'll tell you a pretty funny story. So, um, give you a little back story. So, my father-in-law lives in an RV on my property. This is, this is the comedy part of the show today. Um, he lives in a, an RV on my property because his house burnt down and he was going to live there temporarily and it's been, I don't know, seven months. Anyway, he has electricity, but he does not have water, so he doesn't have a bathroom. So he'll come in our house and use our bathroom or take a shower and stuff like that. But today he was sitting down, we were talking to him and he was like, oh, I woke up at four o'clock this morning had a cup of coffee and then it hit me and I had to take shit and he was like I'm gonna go down to the gas station real quick because he didn't want to come in our house and wake us up and he started to get dressed and then realized that uh I'm not gonna make it to the gas station oh I saw the text or the his I thought it was a I thought he was like sick and had a bag on purpose no (laughs) so he was like I'm not going to make it to the gas station and then he was like I'm not going to make it in the house. So he started looking around his RV and there was no, not a pot or a trash can and stuff. And then he was like, I'm going to have to take a shit on the floor. I'm 58 years old. I'm not going to shit in my pants. I'll shit on the floor before I shit in my pants. And he looked down and there was a bag, like a grocery bag on the ground. So he's like, so I shit in this grocery bag. And I was like, you shit in a grocery bag. 
And he was like, yeah. And so I was like, I can't believe you're even telling us this. And his daughter and my wife was like, I don't even want to hear this stuff. And then he was like, then I went to work and they were talking about sending somebody home. And he was like, if anyone gets to go home, I get to go home. And they're like, why do you get it home? He goes, because I shit in a bag this morning. Has anybody else done that? And I was like, you told the people at work? He's like, I don't give a fuck. So you think that's where the story ends. That's not where the story ends. So he he's like, I'm going to go back to my trailer and, and let the dog out. So he leaves, and he leaves his phone sitting on my couch. And, of course, my wife's like, oh, my dad left his phone. I guess you can't call him. Is his phone locked? I said, I don't know. So I hand it to her. She's like, oh, he doesn't lock his phone. So she went on his Facebook page. And she posted, my oh, name she is Wayne Moreland. <laughs> I'm a grown man, and I shit in a bag this morning. I don't know if he still knows that. And then people started commenting like, <laughs> ha, 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 someone hijacked your phone, blah, blah, blah. And then somebody from his work posted, I bet it was a waggles bag. <laughs> so he definitely told the people he was working with the story. That it was a waggles bag. <laughs> <laughs> That is awful. I'm having a hard time. I'm not going to lie. You can't find... I, that's why we don't know how the system works. Yep. It's not an easy fix. Just look at how many electoral votes in, in Tennessee. I don't know. Because that, that tells you how many people there are. 11. Hey, Siri. Does Tennessee was, a lot closer to, have to follow... With 13 than... I don't know where 60 something came from. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. Vote for? Okay, I found this on the web for... Destiny. But I think there's only... A, a handful, I'm not exactly how many sure, but there are some states. Right, that, faithless electors. It yeah. says that in here. But it says like each state has their own rules and laws for selecting an elector. Um, it, and I was trying to find Tennessee's. Because that's, that that's one of the arguments that I was reading, because I guess it's at the Supreme Court right now with one of the western states that that's going on with. It might be like Idaho or Montana, but that was, I guess, one of their arguments was, you know, we elected this official, or that elect that right. that official is elected. You know that does not give them the choice to then. Right. It says in here that that they are required if pledged, if they pledge to, if they say, if their names on the ballot is Jim Gray, pledge to vote Donald Trump, they are obligated to vote that. But I recall on the last one is that there was uh, the whole list of electors or whatever, which I don't. Understand. It said like choose. Yeah, I guess it said choose eleven, and I chose eleven that didn't. Because then there's the set that are pledged to vote for, and then there's blanks. There's ones that it's like again Jim Gray, but no pledge. So since that person hasn't pledged, they're allowed to vote otherwise. I guess I don't know. I'm confused about it. Because here's a okay. So here's yeah, a real exactly. here's a real interesting question. Because in reading on this is like so it's like so your president is on the ballot. So Trump Biden will be on the ballot, and then. State of Tennessee will have like 30 electors on the ballot <laughs> and then you get to pick 11 of them or whatever. To, so if you put, if I vote Biden, <coughs> but then vote for all Trump pledged electors, who did I vote for? I don't, Biden. Right? I wouldn't think that the ballot would list what each elector would vote for. I, re, I recall oh. specifically it's saying, again, I don't remember the person's name, yeah. but it said pledge to Donald Trump. Pledge to Donald Trump. Pledge to Donald Trump. Pledge to um, Hillary Clinton. Pledge to Hillary Clinton. Pledge to Hillary Clinton. So there's like 50 names, and like so we could vote 35 for a or 40 of them, regardless of what the majority of the state chooses. We can vote for an electorate that will. Yeah, that's forward. what I'm saying. That's what I'm very curious. Like I'm, I'm legitimately curious in, in looking at this and then thinking back at the last time I voted. Like if I voted for Hillary Clinton, but then in the electors I'm choosing to vote for me are all pledged to Trump, then according to the wiki article at least, that if they are pledged to, they are legally obligated to. So if Max and Sam, the two of you are... I understand. I don't think they can pledge a vote prior. I mean, that's what it's saying on here. If they're pledged to vote for that person... Yeah. So what you're... So again, the Electoral College, my understanding of it is you are essentially assigning electors to go vote for you in the college. So again, if I voted for Hillary Clinton, but I selected all electors that are pledged to Trump, who did I vote for? 
because the the electors are the ones that are I'm actually voting for because they're the ones that are actually casting the ballot for president of the United States. So the popular vote would count me as a Hillary vote, but the electoral college would count me as a Trump vote. I don't know. You, I guys are you like, can't be double counted. I'm, I'm losing my mind right now because it's just. Do you okay? So last time I you voted, I understand what you're saying. But, but do you remember? Do, do you recall what I'm talking about? Like, do you I remember didn't the read? <laughs> I got to T R and you get I your checked the masters box. or ma- and masters in poli sci. Masters in masters in masters in poli sci. Masters. I think I might have got my doctorate. I can't or was remember. it my? I think my <laughs> thesis was on electoral college. <laughs> Obviously. All right. So then we'll shift to. Did you the the article about five G and Farragut? Do you read it? Uh, that you sent that and. Uh, I was like, this is too stupid to read. It is it is pretty stupid. I mean, it's, it is it is exactly what you think it is. I'm assuming, so, Farragut's yeah, like, are hoity-toity city. They're, they're, Knoxville. They're, 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 they're the Hollywood of right. Knoxville. But they are a separate... The, see, this is what I haven't... I don't quite understand, because I know there's you know, restaurant people that we know that there's different kind of rules and stuff in there. They are not a separate municipality, but they are like... On, they have separate ordinances. Like, right. you cannot have more than... One sign marquee on your building. You can't have if you know the the road runs east and west, and you have a you know Billy Bob Steakhouse on the east side. Then you don't get one on the west side. Huh. So that's why they're all in the front. So you don't have right. You can't have more than one marquee, and then well, I guess not more than one marquee. One logo, one logo on your building, and then they're marquees. If you notice when you're driving out there, they're really low to the ground. Right, they're short, yeah, because they're not allowed to have the high. They've got some weird ass laws. Well, I'll tell you what's weird is I think it's uh, uh, D.C. area. I think Virginia side of D.C. Like they all have that low sign, and they have really high like like shrubs and bushes like along the side of the road. And so there's a fucking Walmart. You can't see it because there's all these bushes and trees in the way, and there's just this really low sign that's lower than the bushes and trees out on the corner of the road to get into the Walmart. But so the five G thing in Farragut. So that's one of the things that I'm curious about because I co- I don't quite understand where they sit in the in the realm of municipalities and what their authority really is. But the topic to me that jumps out on that is if you actually read the article, is some of the residents are concerned because they're dumb that five G may or may not cause. They didn't say coronavirus, but there may be health consequences of having 5G near you, which is not impossible. So what did they do? Like, it's highly unlikely. What's the difference? I mean, my first question is, what is the? Is there a separate poll that's putting out a different signal? That's actually that's the coolest part of 5G. Brain cancer, some shit. By the, the coolest part about 5G is that instead of having those towers that you see around, where they're the big ones, there's a couple. I think Farragut's the one place that I've seen one that has the one that are trying to camouflage to look like a tree except it's like 40 feet taller than all the trees around it <laughs> and it looks really bad. But the 5G poles, they're supposed to be like, they're supposed to look like street lights, like street poles with street lamps. Like they're supposed to really blend in as far as the decor of the community. Like they're not supposed to like be that strong. And so because what, they're low to the ground, <laughs> the, the radio waves hit you or maybe something. the signals, but, but I mean, it's, it's a, it's a fifth generation Wi-Fi. essentially is, is what it's, what it is. And so the question is not the health effects one. That's not what that what what jumps out to me about that article in in my thought process is that a municipality has a concern and does not wish to allow these in their municipality. Misguided or not is not important. They could be they could be the dumbest reason ever that they don't want it there. But they have to ask this. They're they're it's essentially like we like a. Uh, Knox County had pot on the ballot a couple of elections ago. Do you guys remember that? I do. Yeah. And, you know, the people were talking about it on the news, and it's like, well, it doesn't really mean anything. We could vote it in, but it doesn't make it legal because it's still a state law and blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. And so it's basically just a kind of – it's kind of to Stepping make our – Right. It's to make the to make our voices heard kind of it deal. It would be that uh, city of Knoxville or a county Knoxville cop would not arrest you for it, but a state trooper would. Well, it's not even that though. It's that you can't, you couldn't operate business with it. You couldn't do anything with it because it's still illegal in the state, which is still kind of weird. But my point with the five G thing is, so the township of Farragut doesn't want it. Whether it's a bad idea or not doesn't matter. But they just don't want it. But they have to. They 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 sent a letter through their lawyer's office, the county or the municipality's lawyer office, to the state and the federal government, asking them to stop Verizon from putting these towers in. 
And so it jumps out to me in my libertarianism is that a local municipality has to ask the state and federal government to keep a private company from putting infrastructure on that original municipality's property because if it's street lamps and stuff, it's going to be in that easement area on the side of the road yeah. and stuff. And so we, the town of Farragut, have, you know, not control, that's not the right word, but we are the, you know, we are the managers of this domain. And are, you, are you sure that the Verizon isn't putting it on their own private property? If that's the case, then I don't care. But again, the street lamps part, the, and reading the article, they say they, they, they look like street lamps. I'm assuming well, I mean, they're not going to put a street lamp on a private property. You could, but it would be kind of weird just to have a street lamp in the middle of a parking lot. I mean, and that's fine. That's a different There's street lamps in the middle of parking lots all the time. Well, if it's a, yeah, but if that's the case, <laughs> if that's the case, yes, that's a separate issue. But to me, it, at least it reads like it's going to be like along a sidewalk along Kingston Pike. Yeah. But, but in that case, so going off of that, can I put whatever I want on a street lamp if I wanted to do? No, they, they, they have the right to say what you can put on a street lamp. And Who what does? You can't. The people that own it. If the city of Farragut owns that property and owns that street lamp, that's right. That's my a, right. Then a private company cannot put it on it. They don't have to ask anybody. They don't have to, so but that's, it, ha- it has to be a private. It has to be a private property. I mean, there's there's people that, you know, they'll have five acres out in something, and T-Mobile or Verizon will come in and they're like, "Hey, can we we want to rent? Right, we'll lease this a square by square thing. Well, right, right there at." Uh, in halls at uh, was that Beaver Dam Baptist Church, out in their parking lot area, there's a freaking ten by ten fenced off thing with a giant pole. So whoever that is, AT and T, Verizon, whoever, went to Beaver Dam was like, "We'll pay you so much a month to so us to put this pole here." Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know it has that to part. Be, it has to be that they want to stop Verizon. But from even then, it on I mean, private property. But even on that on on that part of it too, I would think that Fargo, the the township would have some authority for those private property owners to at least be able to talk to them directly, to not have to have state and federal intervention. Maybe they did, and the, the owners are like they're paying me five grand a month. That might be true. I'd, I'd be yeah. curious. I'm curious to know that part of it. It's just that just that part just jumped out at me. It's kind of weird that that. A local municipality has to ask federal and state permission for something to not go on what I was assuming was their property. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's going to be like every tenth light pole on Kingston Pike is going to have a little five G attachment hanging off it, essentially, and it's going to look like a street lamp, and it's not going to be ugly. It's just going to be. I, I would. I mean, key. with the technology, would I don't know that much about five G, but I would assume that that's going to lessen the amount of transmitters or whatever that they're gonna have to have out there i see I, I was i was thinking 5g was the other way is that since it's so much faster you it has to, to get more it right there's there's more it needs more towers and plus they're building knowing that 5g is going to take over it, i mean it's the next generation so it's going to take over all these other ones so they're building off of what they perceive capacity to be in the next 10 years so they're going to be building them a lot more and if, if uh, AT&T or Verizon or Sprint or any of you guys are listening, um, I got two and a half acres. So if you want to pay me to put one of those on my property, um, I'm good with it. Mm-hmm. Hopefully AT&T because that's who I uh, go with. But if Verizon comes along, I'll switch. They'll probably share. So I had a customer. I tried to search 5G towers and everything that comes up is coronavirus conspiracy. Coronavirus conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that 5G causes coronavirus. That's That's what I heard. I had a customer where I used to work that I used to shuttle back to his house, and he lived out in Farragut. I'm sure exactly what road that the road that kind of goes around back to around to uh, Watt Road. So he's back there along, I guess along some kind of ridge line. Yeah, but supposedly he had like one of the highest uh, properties in Knox County, and he said he was constantly getting by elevation. Yeah, by elevation. Yeah, he was constantly getting approached by you know different people who wanted to build you know cell phone towers or whatever kind yeah. of satellite towers onto his property. Yeah, I mean, like like I said, I don't, I don't, I'm, I. Like at said, least that, the picture may be more of like the city trying to stop private landowners from being like, hey. Yeah, I mean, like Max was saying, you know, like. Well, because I was because five grand a month, like I don't give a fuck. Yeah, because I was trying well, shit on my fucking property. Yeah. Well, because I was thinking about it, because I was Please trying to be consistent. Thank you. I'm tired of looking at bushes. Like I'll look at <laughs> some metal. That's a nice pole. I was trying. I can wrap some Christmas it. lights around that, and make <laughs> it look nice. 
I can spend five G's and hire one of those people to come put my crystal slides up for me. Exactly. And I still got eleven more months of five grand a month <laughs> of those five G five G's. Well, no, because you got to spend five grand for them to take it down. The, so you only get ten months. Ah, well, sorry. So you only you only make fifty grand a year, which is like what almost twice as much as the average. Or no, that's about the average income in the United States right now. Is it the average? Something income? like that. It's a little less. I think it's like forty six, but. I don't know. It just struck me as funny that I, I, it's curious and try to be consistent in thought. We were talking a couple of weeks ago about how I was, and I guess I currently am that neighbor since, but I'm in the middle of a project, so my neighbors can suck it. But that has the dumpy yard, you know, and where I agree with you on the what, what Max said a couple of weeks ago is that, you know, if, if my tall grass is housing a bunch of wildlife that is endangering the neighbor's kids or getting in you know like i've got ground squirrels or something that are getting into other people's house and they're living in my yard but they're running in and doing damage to other people it's my responsibility to keep my yard in shape to not cause external damage i agree with that and if the 5g turns out to do some physical damage to people then it's the same thing but if it doesn't then yeah it's my fucking yard i'll put a 5g tower on it if i want and that being said i bet you i couldn't put one here i guarantee you i couldn't put one here well you're in the county so are you yeah, why wouldn't you be able to put one here? I'm just saying, I guarantee I'd, you. I'd say it's probably property size. It probably has to be so much space around it. Or around whatever. it, yeah. Oh. You have a giant pole. In case it ever kids, actually they'd, like, they'd be toppled over. they throwing with... pillows off of it, see <laughs> if they can jump off. I can fly. I believe I could fly. So I wish AC was here. And AC, if you listen to this tomorrow. He won't. Today. Whatever. See, I have... This we'll save bad. it. We're doing okay. So hold on. Let, let's do a little a little quick bit, bit of housekeeping. So this is episode ten, and we'll release this episode to, as normal. We're going to do episode uh, ten point two five tomorrow afternoon with AC because he's back in town and he wants to spend his one day of not working with us like a loser. And we're going to take advantage of that. So if there's something we talk about tonight that you want to save for tomorrow, save it for tomorrow. Bring it up. Mention it. I'll mention it. And then we'll we'll but we'll make mental note to to bring it up tomorrow because there's a lot of stuff because we have I mean last episode we didn't have him here and and I think especially for my libertarianism that he likes to pick on and you trying to turn him into a Trump supporter he tends to take the brunt of a lot of the conversation. Well, this is uh, if you've watched any TV in the last couple weeks, you hear all this. So I'm guessing the 70 hour a week worker is probably not that person but go ahead yeah and that person's not listening to this show anyway so also true um but you have all these like sports figures like oh well i guess it's it's which channel you're watching if you're watching discovery it's all the reality shows on discovery and all these people are like we just want to thank the first responders and blah 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 and all this stuff and and this is going to sound cold but oh I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it around um it's their job like dealing with infections and stuff like that like that is that's kind of what they deal with i mean that's kind of what you signed up for yeah yeah it's kind of what you signed up for and and so my the point is because the the side thing is you going well why are we thinking all these veterans okay that's i know that's that's exactly where you're going and i agree with you wholeheartedly but in that case it's like let's just thank the veterans we're gonna thank all veterans for vietnam doesn't matter what you're in, we're, but now we care about it. Like, I think that police officers and firemen and stuff and risking their lives, why now do we care about these people? Right. Like, I mean, that, I think- that, that's, that's the problem I have is like, like, oh my God, all these doctors and nurses out there risking their life when you have, I think I saw there was 88 healthcare workers that have died um, from the catching the coronavirus and something there was it was 88 they had 88 shoes on the ground for they looked like those stupid nursing crocs or whatever kind of right. things and so then i looked it up and it they comes out old. to like wait 88 shoes or 88 pairs well okay there was i'm just making sure <laughs> 88 pairs because they want to make it look impressive yeah exactly. <laughs> so um but then, so I looked it up about how many healthcare workers die from infections and stuff. So we, I had to go back pre-coronavirus and stuff. And there was a study from '92 to um, 2002, and it was like, you know, so 10 years, and it was 7,000 people in the healthcare um, 
industry have died from catching something well, from working. what they're doing, right. infectious disease or whatever. So I'm like, okay, 7,000 people divided by 10, that's 700 people a year. So that's a normal 700 people a year. And there we've had 88 I think, okay. So, and so, so yeah, yeah. the thing is, I'm, I'm not, uh, and I'm not trying to be cold and saying that these people don't deserve it. But, but like, it's not even a spike. Realistically, at this no, point. No, it's, it's, it's not. It's not even hitting the thing. It's like... Because the question really is... Let, let, let's appreciate them all the time. Right. Not just... All of a sudden, everyone's like, oh... Well, let's just... How about... Let's just appreciate people for whatever they do. If you work at McDonald's and you're a little fucking shitbag... If you're a shitbag, I'm not going to appreciate you. But if you're doing your job, thank you. I say thank you to the fucking grocery store clerk when I'm checking out. Mm-hmm. They check out my shit and they go, here's your receipt. You got this many fuel points. Thank you. Have a great day. Why is that... Oh, I mean, that is not a special... I'm not stopping, you know... I don't like I've thought about it a lot, especially with all the veterans groups and stuff that you're involved with and stuff like that. Like I'll see a guy with his fucking hat um, in the grocery store and it crosses my mind. I should thank you for his, I should thank him for his service. And I never do because it's inconsistent with my thought process of <laughs> you did it. You know, if if you were if, if, if you had a father like me, you would have never went over there. If you would have <laughs> my dad tried to get me to sign up. So um, but if you were drafted, then I'll thank you. Then you're special. In my mind, in, in in this in this kind of conver- in the conversation we're having, if you were drafted, if you didn't want to do it, and you did it because you had to. So the World War Two through the Korean War, yeah, those people are special. Not all of them. I just mean, the people that <laughs> were forced to, not the people that joined. I'm just saying, like, no, like, especially we're a joke, but I understand. What but you're especially saying. now, especially I don't think we enlisted the draft during World War Two. I don't know. I don't I think know. we had. There was enough people that straight. But up especially nowadays, up. with the with with the incentive structure. And the sign up bonuses and all the stuff that you do that you get to go. I mean, that's like that's like thanking a football player for playing college football. No, it's, uh, it's really not anywhere close to that. That's a bad example. How's that a bad example? <laughs> they get free school. They get a bonus for getting there. They get all their food, food, meals paid for for the time they're in. It's the same you premise. You get free school. There you go. Play a sport. The, the GI Bill is not a real thing. Here's the gun. It is, but it's not free school. You can't go to the University of Tennessee on a GI Bill. My sister-in-law did. She not, didn't pay for her whole thing. It's it's ten thousand dollars. What's UT tuition? Fucking, I don't know. A lot. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I did the GI Bill. It's not. It, it, it's not. Well, then they're then their advertising a, is misleading because I think it's a flat they sell rate. Us. Yeah, they're like, here's this much. You put here's in a 12, fine to school. You, you want to go buy this twelve hundred dollars. But first year you put in a hundred dollars. My GI Bill. It was a hundred dollars a month for. The first year you're in, that's twelve hundred dollars, and you get like ten thousand dollars of school back. There may be some other incentives, like I don't know that because you're on the GI Bill, you get a Pell Grant. I don't know, but what I'm saying is, it's not. It does not pay for. It's not a, full ride. Okay, it's not a full ride. For I was. Me. I mean, the, the 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 ads don't sell it that way. Like signing bonus. I've seen I've seen some signing bonuses for joining the military for like ten thousand dollars, not right two point seven million dollars. <laughs> you know, play like college football, not pro ball. Oh, yeah, I'm assuming they right. give you. We're you know, not like, talking Shaq and basketball. Like a lump no, sum. It's like, hey, you can go to community college and you know get a full degree, or you can go to Harvard and pay for a class. <laughs> pay for one class. Yeah, and then you can work with Wuhan, China, in uh-huh. developing a bioterrorism thing that causes the whole world to shut down. Right. <sighs> okay, not going there. But <laughs> I just, I mean, I, I don't. I like it. Still, point, point, still the same. It's like it's not like I don't know it. it if anything that I'm gonna complain about it is the way they the way they recruit. I think it's a little dirty because to me, I mean, like I said, like it, it it sells to me for watching this stuff. It's like you get to go do all this shit. Like how many guys actually get real action? Like was it like ten percent? Yeah, probably. You know, and so it's like you got these ads. They're flying fucking helicopters and you know yeah. navy ads and all this cool shit. And <laughs> they it's show like the jet and stuff, and you're like, right. oh, there's what 150 of those people. Yeah, and you're the you're you're the you're the kid actually scrubbing the fucking shitter and stuff yeah. like that you're working in the kitchen making eggs in the morning at six o'clock yeah that's the, that's the thing is like some i mean the military obviously has to have all those jobs for it to perform well but like you have the people that are actually front lines and stuff like that then you have the guy working in the kitchen and you have the maintenance guy or you right. have like you know you have all the jobs that you'd have in normal society and we call them pogues right yeah, but they're still vets too they are still vets. And it's weird because when someone's like, oh, thank you for your service, it's always like, uh, it's weird. And I wonder how these nurses and doctors and firefighters and stuff now are. Because I think in general, people think, have always thought, even though majority of them I don't like, um, 
I mean, cops. You're like, oh, they're they're out there on the front lines every day doing this kind of stuff. So you don't. They kind of get that appreciation anyway. Um, firefighters really only get it when you have something like 9/11 hit, and everyone's like, oh, thank a firefighter. Like, yeah, you know. So there is something. There is something like inherent in all these jobs. Probably less healthcare, but like police firefighters military but there is something like inherent that like i don't know if we teach our kids it or if it's just there in the first place but like i mean a fucking fire truck to a five-year-old is the most amazing thing on the planet and the guy that gets to drive the fire truck and wear the cool suit is the coolest guy ever and i don't know if that's one of those things that you know we were just kind of air quotes conditioned as children to believe or whether that's just like a natural because, I mean, there's... I mean, it's part of it. I mean, when you watch some of the kids' shows, I mean, like, you know, Bob the Builder and right. kind of things like that, you know, they there's always episodes in there where they'll, you know, have a Officer Bob and, you know, yeah. Firefighter Joe. You, you know who's the redheaded stepchild of that whole entire thing, though? Coast Guard? EMTs. Oh. Like, on Halloween, they've got a slutty doctor, slutty nurse, <laughs> slutty cop. There's never a slutty EMT costume. Like those are the people out there. Like I'm on the front lines, also. Like, why don't I get appreciated? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah you're an EMT. I don't realize how much a big difference there is between an EMT and then getting your actual like paramedic license. Oh it's yeah, different. like AC yeah, says, it's like, totally. It's much hard, much more harder to get. Or AC says school. all the time, if you're if like if if we're out in the woods or something, and he gets shot on accident, and you you call and you call nine one one or whatever, and they're like, we'll send an ambulance. And he says, ask him if there's a medic on it, and if they say no, just tell him to leave it. Tell them leave it. You're don't don't, don't even send it. Don't send a truck out here unless there's a medic on it. Yeah. Well, it's 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 weird because you know, following a lot of military things and these people like volunteering. And, you know, like a uh, guy that we're going to try to have on the program here um, that he volunteers over in Syria. He with uh, I started watching by the way. Um, and then you have other people that volunteer, and you have one guy that was uh, he was a medic in the army. I want to say, yeah. I was telling I was telling Sam about it before recording that, like yeah, over he, there, he's like a field surgeon. Over here, at best, he's an EMT. Yeah, he's like in the United States, I'm EMT, and here I'm a doctor. I'm a surgeon. He's like, it's just crazy that the what I can do over here. They look at me as a doctor, and in the United States, I'm a EMT. Right. Well, the question, uh, but the question I had when, about it when I was watching it is that is it because of his licensure and stuff like that has he gone through the schooling and all the crap and that's why he's not further than an emt or is it the lack of anything better over there that what what is just an emt here like literally just an emt here it's over like, there oh, you know how the, to put a band-aid on right that's well, a doctor different. well i mean like like what 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 ted was saying um Who? when he was overseas friend ted when he was overseas the army guy the, from the from ah. the show was that like you know EMTs are only allowed to do certain things where a paramedic can put IVs in and offer drugs and and stuff like that where uh, EMT is really like let me get you stable until somebody that knows what the fuck they're doing. They put right. this neck brace on you yeah. and strap right. you down strap to a gurney. Board and, yeah. So, so so essentially what it is, and this is where my libertarian gets to scream, yay. Is that the lack of regulations? That's a guy who is capable of doing a job well, do the job to the fullest extent. Where the regulations here says, if you don't have a mountain of fucking paperwork that says you can do your job well, whether you can do your job well is not important. You can't do that job unless you have this mountain of paperwork that proves to the state that you can do your job well. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, like obviously, honestly, this guy, this through the 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 two, uh, I think I've got two, maybe three episodes in. You know, I mean. This is some battlefield straight up real shit he's doing, and I'd be okay with that guy shows up if I get shot when we're out hunting sometime. Yeah, and and, and you know, but, but he also has military training. So like, when I was in the Marine Corps, I went through a uh, Marine Corps. Just has no medical because we're a Department of the Navy. The Navy has all the our corpsmen and stuff like that, and I really like the medical side. So um, anytime there was a time where I could do any kind of medical, um, I did it. I got certified as a CPR instructor. Um, I got, I took a thing called Corman three, four, um, and you'd have to learn how to do IVs and learn about drugs and stuff like that. And I learned about all that stuff, but I wasn't qualified to do that stuff. But 
if shit went down, I could do that stuff. Right. Basically. Yeah, so. the rules are out the window when you're in the field. And yeah, nobody happening. cares. If I'm right. dying and you think that's right. amputating my leg is, even though you're not a surgeon, I'm okay with you cutting it off if that's going to save my life. Like, right. You're the, be- you're the best You're the best I have right now. Yeah. I'm gonna, you get, you I'm get better me. knowledge than anybody else. Yeah. But the show we're referring to is called um, Hunting ISIS. Um, and there's a guy, Jeremiah, and I, I friended him. And he's going to be back. He's he's should be back, coming back right now. He was... Uh, oh, I'm curious if he's going to have any issues getting back right now, considering... Well, all he, he was there for... He was getting... He was, I mean, I don't want to say leave or anything, but he's a volunteer, so he leaves whenever he wants. But he was coming back. He said, I guess this was a week and a half ago. He said, um, I'm done here in a week, and it's going to take me another week to get back. So we're shooting for like July 6th or June 6th. Um, and he's going to, um, we're going to talk to him about coming on the show and kind of his perspective of the stuff he's doing. Because if you don't know about it there, there's a lot of people that are prior military that volunteer they don't get paid anything they have to pay for their own transportation they have to do all their own stuff to get over to this country to fight against isis and so this is trying to uh hopefully we can get him on the show and uh have his perspective which is going to be obviously way different than probably a lot of us and and what he's dealing with and seeing and stuff so yeah we'll, we'll see if that works out yeah we might have to have a special double expl- expletive tag on that episode Double hogs, bro. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty crazy. I mean, they were just hanging out in that, whatever, the training center or whatever it was, and they, uh-huh. there was a sniper in town, and they're just sitting out there <laughs> trying to figure out Let's where Let's see if he, he gets out. Yeah. Yeah. Put the dummy out, and they're just t- talking to the camera, and all of a sudden, boop, yeah. shoot. shoot. He's like, oh, dust. I can't shoot from that position anymore. I got to go move over to another position. Yeah. Oh, nope. Dust again. Let me go over to this position. Yeah, and then the Jeremiah guy is out there. They're out trying to flush him out or whatever, and he's out there behind like just like a dirt wall. Yeah, that big fucking machine gun just comes up. Anything? And then he just kind of moved like ten feet to the left to do it again, and then move a little bit further this way, a little bit. I mean, it's fucking yeah. It's it's a whole other world. Yeah, the the doctor guy, the Ted doctor or whatever his name was. Um, I think it was Ted. Uh, but he was like fucking. God, he was mean. Like he was angry. Like that's like you're you're here on volunteer, and I get it. But fucking Christ, like he fucking like he was screaming at that lady, that dude. He's like, it's like perfectly good fucking wheelchair, and they're moving, they're using it to move their shit. <laughs> yeah. So he goes over there, and like he grabs all their shit and shoves it into their chest, and puts this old man in the wheelchair. He's like, he fucking do it, <laughs> just carry this. Did, did you see the one with the where they're hugged, huddled behind the car, so they get shot at, and they're like. Does everyone else see the ID right there? Like, and then the guy's like, "Yeah, I wish I had a gun on me." And he was like, "Here you go. You can have this one." And he <laughs> ran off like, "It's it's." A I whole haven't seen that yet. Yeah, it's crazy. And so, like you know, and th- those people. I mean, whatever you believe in military and and, and uh, that kind of stuff, but that is that's commitment. That is, I see a cause. I'm not getting paid shit. And I'm going over to do that. And that's completely different than our military that, I mean, when I was in the military, it didn't fucking matter if I wanted to be there or not. I signed up for it and I'm there. I'm doing the job. But it's a whole different issue when you're not getting paid. You're, you're, you're paying to be there. So it'd be a nice perspective. Yeah, I mean... Which and we were hoping to get my brother, and I told him he was going to come. He's a, a. We're trying to get some like guest people to call in and and have some different uh, perspectives on um, just different things because we're a bunch of idiots for the most part. So we're getting a bunch of perspectives, and he's a he's a teacher, and he teaches you know biology, chemistry, physics, geology, that kind of stuff. So getting his view on some of the stuff which hate to say it sam he probably we had a big talk about the whole um isol glacial thing like that and he had a very um he he was like you're absolutely right that glacier is growing but the problem is the other side of the glacier is melting faster than that one's growing so it could be an anomaly and we look back like he talks about and he agrees that you know we're, we're coming out of an ice age so that that changes stuff but the whole idea of that are we're melting faster than we've melted millions of years ago which is a whole nother fucking thing i want to ask him about because how do you know like i don't understand how you can look at core samples from 
a million years ago and know like yeah. Who was the person that made that up? I think <laughs> like a lot of science. I, I wonder about that. Like, yeah. how, how, how was that? I think it's. I think, I think he's probably going to be good on that too because he's not a practicer of it as much as he is a teacher of it, and so his ability to explain it to children like us exactly. <laughs> should should help get us and, and, a little and, under, and more and understanding. He does a lot of experiences we were talking about, like um, having what like he was. I, I, I'm I'm going to screw it up, but he was talking about uh, like water in a vial. And then if you take if you take a vial and you put a little bit of water in the bottom of it, you put a temp a temperature gauge in it, and then I think you put it under like a heat lamp, and then you take a vial with no water in it and you put a temperature gauge. Right. The one that doesn't have the water in it will heat up faster. Right. And the other one because of the water is pulling the heat out of the air. Like so he does science experience with his classes and stuff, and that's kinda of one that he was talking about global warming. Even though I argue with him on a lot of bunch, bunch of shit, just like you guys, but um, <laughs> so it doesn't matter that he knows better. You're still going to argue. It's still gonna, point. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he was supposed to be here tonight, but not here tonight, but calling tonight. But um, I think it'd be cool to get some more people and different peoples for so, sure. Um, that'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I want to do a, a, a lawyer episode at least once or twice. Yeah, get a lawyer in here and, and kind of see what his is. His because he is he is a. It's I think it's always great to find people that are bastions of their their niche right well that that would be curious we are not a bastion of anything. any right well one of the things but for for the for we the, know a little bit about a lot of stuff for the That's, lawyer for the lawyer episode what i want is he is a he is a just he is a flat anti-trumper and so i trying to spread my libertarian views of trying to push him towards libertarianism and i say that and he say he, he voted for gary johnson last time but he won't even look at hornberger now because i keep talking to him about it and it's really confusing to me because, like, um, he was the one that posted the picture I sent, and this was a couple weeks ago, where it was, like, it was a cartoon of Biden, and it's, like, just this whole list of, it's the, it's the, the pros and cons list, mm-hmm. and the, the whole list of, of cons for Biden, and then the one pro is, he isn't Trump, <laughs> and, which is, it's great, it's hilarious, it's funny, it's perfect, and it's, it's a perfect, to me, that's, it's a pretty accurate description of a lot of mindsets currently and like I, I like i keep trying to poke at that it's like well i got this other guy who has less cons and absolutely has that pro because there's only one guy who is trump and this one isn't and so i'd like to talk to i'd like to see his and you know especially a guy who voted for a libertarian before who like brushes the new one off maybe he was burnt gary johnson was a terrible um terrible representative of the party but Again, like for that part for me is like, it's just, I want, I want the, I want to see, this is going to be a bad one anyway, but I want to see where we have a third party on the ticket, like a, like a Perot, um, we had in the past where they get to get up there in the debate stage and they get to get to be part of the, part of the game. And, um, and one that's more centered. Cause I think Perot was, I, I think Perot was actually kind of probably a, a semi libertarian. So he's probably the best real example that we've had. Um, and most libertarians probably tend to pull more from the right and going back to a conversation we've, we were having earlier about how the Republicans need every single vote that's their vote air quotes, or the Democrats are going to beat them. So anytime there's a third party, unless it's a way further left third party, it's going to take from Republicans more than Democrats. But I think a good solid libertarian candidate, I think Hornberger fits the bill a little bit. Um, he's got some issues in, he's a little bit comes off a little bit too preachy in the in the it's it's the core it's it's core libertarianism and i don't dislike it but i could see how it's off-putting to people that aren't already into it um you know like we're we're going through candidate stances and he does his gun control one and it's like it's a very like constitution says there are right to bear arms to protect yourself from this that and the other including the government and you know all that stuff and it's like yeah i agree with that 100 percent. except it's not really a you know i mean biden has a specific viewpoint on it you know that's that's discussable where the mm-hmm. where most of the hornberger stuff comes off and this is again this is why it's hard to argue libertarianism could, well, could we get a politician in here like, i mean we could try we, like uh, i thought about i say, thought hey, about straight up yeah just straight up we, email a podcast and stuff i mean because i mean literal. i mean not to belittle you guys but i'm doing to me in the same is ac is the only one that we have here that has like uh 
an expertise in a certain field. You know what I mean? I mean, unless we're going to be talking about transportation, logistics, which nobody an cares accredited, about. An accredited, an accredited version or an experiential? Because you have plenty of military experience that we get to discuss. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that just... You and I combined. Your... I mean, I would argue that you and I combined are the economists of the crew. You know, yeah, in, in practical, like we actually get to live and see a, a, a business economy at work as opposed to the theoreticals and hearing. Yeah, yeah, true. But like, it's not like, a, oh, we've got an RN or we have a teacher or we have a politician or we have somebody that thinks that those people actually know what they're doing when maybe they don't know what they're doing. Well, I mean, that's what drives. I mean, one of the things that, that it's an AC frustration to me, but it's a and Sam does it to me too a lot, is that we get into this, you know, the evils of business thing, and it's like I am that person. You understand that when you're complaining about how evil businesses are, I am one of those people because you blanket it across the board. It's like you know they're they're greedy and selfish, and all they care about is themselves. And I and 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 Sam will attest to it in many of our discussions about it. I could see how it's very easily construed as such because your obligation to the job is X, Y, and Z and X, Y, and Z are very, if you pick X by itself, X is, you know, um, obligation to the shareholder, which is not something that we particularly have to deal with because we are privately owned and it's a, just a, it's a, it's a partnership as we said, we will, if Trefecta ever gets off. Right. Um, but you know, like all the different little parts and pieces of it. And it's like, okay, like uh, Sam and I were talking, this is a couple, couple months ago about uh, um, like globalism and offshoring, whatever. And it's like, if I'm the CEO and my job is, my obligation is to the shareholder. Cause that's the job period. Yeah. If I'm trying to figure out how to make sure this company is, 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 is running well and making money and doing the things that we do. And, I see the opportunity to move our manufacturing from here to Mexico. And I see that as over the next X number of years, it's going to cost 10, 20, 30, 45, 50% less, including the moving time and all the different stuff that's going to come out less. And that is going to be a benefit for my shareholders. Then that is the thing I do. It's not that I'm selfish or greedy. I mean, I'm obviously I, most CEOs have a, uh, uh, an owner's stake somewhere in the process. Absolutely. And so it is in their best interest personally as well, but that is the job. And if you can figure out how to incentivize that job in a different way, I'm all ears. But you know, if the company is built in a way, the CEO does the job. And so you can't, I, I just, it, it's too easy. It's just too easy to blanket statement, hate on owners and, and CEOs of doing what they're supposed to do. Because most CEOs and owners, even though it's in a, it's in a, it's indirect when they're doing it as a CEO and owner, they're not acting much differently than individuals do on a normal day to day basis with normal day to day decisions. I choose to do X because it benefits me, whatever it is. Like I chose to go to work today because it benefits me, you know, and some of it's direct benefits that puts money in my pocket. Some of it is Indirect benefits is it's something I enjoy. This podcast right now I enjoy very much. I've spent money on doing it because I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It is fun. I like doing it. And so I act selfishly as an individual. That is the way human beings work. Now, at the same time, we hired people we didn't need to hire because we wanted to give back and be helpful to other people because we were in a position to do so. Those things aren't mutually exclusive. exclusive. One doesn't... Being functionally selfish as an individual or functionally selfish as a business doesn't mean I'm not capable of being selfless and being altruistic, although I don't like the word, um, isn't an option. And it's and it, it's somehow counterintuitive to the job. It can be if we were in a position where it might have made it where there was a question on whether or not those payroll checks would clear, then it's a problem. Whether, you know, maybe we can't pay rent or maybe I'm you know, I got two people working 20 hours a week and what I'm paying them, I need to be buying in product. So I have product on the shelf to sell so that I can then pay them. I mean, there's, there's thought process behind it, but I, it's just, it, it's really frustrating to me when, when, 
when we just drop this blanket statement of, of, of business owners and big business and, and business in general are, are just greedy, selfish, they take advantage of everybody, blah, 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 blah. Everybody takes advantage of everybody all the time. That's lo- that's people. Yeah, people do that. I mean, and, and that's <clears throat> the thing. It's like, you know, people talk about when we do your taxes, there are people complain about um, big businesses not paying taxes. And, you know, I, I do think that it needs to be re- reworked. when these- Actually, I'm going to interrupt. I'm sorry. I was thinking about that earlier today. Um, there's a question in there that I think is, 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 is a mischaracterization on that, on that statement in general, because I was thinking about earlier today. Um, so Amazon doesn't pay corporate taxes, right? That's what everybody complains about. They don't pay corporate taxes. Amazon doesn't pay any taxes. They do good jillion dollars in business, but they don't pay taxes. Does Bezos pay taxes? Does he pay income tax? I'll bet he does. I'm sure he does. But I'll I, bet, think, I, I think the, I the, bet he is the single individually largest one person taxpayer in the United States. I don't know, but the the whole point of the people get complain about, you know, companies, you know, not paying taxes cuz they write this off and they write that off and they write that off. You can say, on a smaller scale, you can say, well, why do salespeople get a write off their gas which that kind of changed recently, but used to be able to write off you know, home office and stuff like that. And you'd write that shit off. Like as an individual paying taxes, you're taking part of in current in earned income credits and chill children credits. And you're, you're taking advantages of what is out there. Right. So you can get more of a refund. But when big businesses take advantage of what is out there, we're like, Oh, those, those fucking greedy business people. But it's it's no, no different than what we're doing, just on a larger scale. Right. So you can't be mad at the business. You need to be mad at the the system that is allowing them to do that. Right. Because that's what we're all going to do. If I mean, it's like the you know the whole uh, stimulus checks that we got. The new one. Have you, heard, have you guys followed the new one? Yeah. That, well, what? they talk about stimulus checks. It's like, oh, it's not a Trump thing. That's a that's a this thing. Whatever you you're taking it because they're giving it to you. No, I guarantee there's nobody that has turned down the check that the government's giving to right. you on moral probably, grounds or whatever. Probably a few people like immediately turned it into something like donated oh, it. It's got Trump's which name a, on it. Fuck that. Which I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna donate. It. Well, that's your. It's a double win, right? Whatever. But it, it's a double win then because you're gonna get the you're gonna get the tax write off for donating it to charity, and then when it comes on your taxes next year, that you're not going to get that because it's just a loan on your own tax return anyway well i was trying to look that up i, I couldn't find where it said it was <laughs> I, I think i sent you a link return. on that, that yeah I've, that, I've, that was not true i i don't know there's a uh, i want to say you did yeah because I, I couldn't find anything on that it was a loan on your next income yeah it's a it's it, it was something from, from the local news station that was like one of the like you know fact check thing channel uh, yeah channel blah 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 you know answers yeah yeah, that's where that's where I and, saw it. And why do we believe in Sn- is it Snope? Snope, whatever. Like, yeah, I don't really. I don't. They're like the me. accurate. Like, oh, you gotta Snope it and see if it's true. Like, who the fucks on in Snope? Like, how do they know everything in the world that to make it true? Like, is there people like sitting at the computer going, "Yeah, right. this sounds true." Why wouldn't be right? Why wouldn't <laughs> they just be the news? Why wouldn't we just get all our news from them if they are the ones that know if it's true or not? One of my podcasters, which is one of my worst. There um, are no other podcasters. One of the other podcast shows that I listen to. One of the other guys that talks into his phone and sends it off the internet was uh, talking about how they should put a scoring system in place. And like every politician, every news organization, every news person should have stats like baseball. Like when they come out, <laughs> like when they come out, there should be a little bar on the bottom that has their stats like baseball and their percentage of truths told and percentage of, uh, of scandals and and you know that I, I was like that's pretty genius like I don't know how you would do it but it was a pretty good idea I thought it was I thought it'd be it'd be interesting problem with it is you're gonna have the same kind of bullshit where it's like well it wasn't complete it wasn't an untruth yeah, it was what, just what qualifying like, agency found that right it's how do you how do you uh, right how do you actually accurately keep those stats without it immediately turning into a well. It's true, but it isn't true. There's so many stories of like, well, you know, he didn't say he didn't do it. He just didn't say he did either. It's just kind of a middle ground. And how does that go on the stat sheet? But 
I mean, I think like he he brought it up on the podcast that I was listening to talking about how um, CNN specifically and uh, Spitzer Spicer. Um, there was Sean Spicer that was the former uh, White House press secretary. No, it's a uh, one of the guys that was big. Um, guy, Spitzer. He, he's the guy that's been big on. I mean, he's been just trying to get rid of Trump from day one. All all he does all day. He was he was big in leading the impeachment hearings. He was big in the Mueller investigation. He would come out on the news from time to time as a guest talking about how, you know, he's already seen the reports. He's seen this, that, and the other. He knows this is going to happen. He's just got to, you got to wait till Mueller releases everything. He can't say it yet. And then it's basically just, the name sounds familiar. Just basically continuing the, you know, and so he, th- that's where he brought this whole stats thing up is because it's like, between, like CNN on the, on the Russia gate issues and stuff like that. It pushed it as fact that Trump did collude with Russia and blah, 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 blah. And so his point was like, they spent, fucking year and a half two years of news cycle and that's all they talked about they waited i mean essentially they didn't give up on it until those midterm elections went through and then when midterm elections went through and then the um house flipped over since the house flipped over they kind of gave up the news story and it's like well how are we going to not think that cnn has got a significant political bias when they're running this story that turns out to be eh, soft at best for two years completely dominating <coughs> i don't Trump's no, activities, but CNN definitely has. You're saying CNN, a bias. which is supposedly you're supposed to be biased towards the left, and you're saying and so when the House switched to, the right. to more Democrats, is when they stopped being less biased. No, they they just they they let that they let that story of the Russia collusion finally fall off the for the front page, for lack of a better word. Why would they do that? When all of a sudden they've got power in Congress, if you want to look at it like that. Because why, why would they drop the story when then their party in power has power? Because then the, because the, the, Mueller, the, they, the Mueller investigation was coming to a close, and so they couldn't continue propagating a story that they were all, that it was all, well, sources say, sources say, sources say, well, now the facts are coming out. How started over in 2016? The facts don't match. When did the Mueller investigation start? Before I don't remember it. when exactly it started. I mean, it, it it came to more of a fold in the past last year. It was when the Mueller report actually came out. I don't. Know. I, don't I don't understand what you're saying. Okay, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't recall the. the you're you're saying it, well. I, I get it that you're saying that CNN stopped or they not, pushed the well, Russian collusion. Saying, they 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 were pushing the Russian Russian collusion up until the point that. Their quote unquote party that they support came into more power and then Which they would dropped it. 2018? It just it seems the polar opposite of what you're trying to say. Oh, they dropped the, the, the CNN dropped the, So the idea being that CNN was pushing. You're saying the, once they the, came the into push, power. CNN was pushing the narrative to help the midterm elections push left and once they, they succeeded dropped it in, once more democrats came into once power they succeed, because uh, uh, I the, think, if the goal was if the goal was to flip to, to flip the house or the senate in the midterms they succeeded in flipping the house so oh, okay. they've they've Nothing reached else. their goal and they can move on I, I was lost up until the last like 30 seconds what he was trying to say and then i was like oh no no i got it okay yeah okay now now i kind of see what you're saying <laughs> they, they were only doing it to flip the house, and once it flipped, then that's they a, could let it go. They were, right, they were being the biased to flip this. <laughs> they were being biased to keep the to keep to keep Trump in bad light, which they're going to they continue to do anyway. But to keep Trump in enough bad light so that voters would vote blue in the midterm, and then once voters voted blue in the midterm, they moved on to other stories. They, they stopped being biased. So, no, they didn't stop being biased, but they moved on to other stories because this was the one that they felt had the strength to move voters around. But they, so what but is they the, what never is dropped the, the Russian collusion because that was pre impeachment hearings. Right, they well they moved on from the collusion to the impeachment hearings. They moved almost like immediately to Ukraine. So what what color is uh the um libertarian? Yellow or purple? Depends on which news organization. Really? Yellow bellies. Who's green? Who's green? Green party. <laughs> is, that, is that what they get green? <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's kind of a self-explanatory. I like, I'd like to, I'd like to go, I'd, I'd like to 
I, I'm going to say it because I'm not going to actually do it. I'd be I, I, the history of the the elephant and the donkey are curious to me. Well, Alabama had a don <laughs> had a elephant because I don't know. Right, the, oh the, no no that was a story like know. there was a circus in town and the elephant ran loose the, the, there's, there's a crimson tide a lot of people um, died and there was a lot of blood on no, the ground there was an elephant that yeah I, I, when i was in alabama for the tennessee alabama me some guy told me it had to do with something that a uh, circus came through and an elephant got out and got loose and then they were like it was roaming around a park and then people were taking care of it, some shit like that and then they were like shit we can't have an elephant roaming around birmingham It'd be like a crimson <laughs> tide. Oh, that's great. <laughs> they got all sorts of fucking mascots. What's wrong with those fuckers? It's weird. I mean, we say, I mean, we can't talk. I mean, we have Smokey. We have a dog and a mountain man. Yeah, but the, doesn't the dog go with the mountain man? Um, Isn't like. Not really? I, think Sm- I mean, Smokey's a standalone <laughs> character. No, like, um, Davy Crockett had a dog. Remember in the Alamo? <laughs> Did you watch that movie? There was a dog there. Did, did you learn this in your master's of poli sci class? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I did. Did my thesis on. I did my thesis David on David Crockett's dog. David Crockett's dog. His oh. name was Smokey. Oh, that's funny. See, Marsha was touting the volunteer spirit in some Senate thing. She was up there talking she's a about how idiot. I mean, it's just so fucking dumb. It's 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 not. She's not wrong. It's because she's like picked out some random Tennesseans that were doing some volunteer stuff. It's like I mean, any any fucking politician right now could go pick out ten people from their state that are doing cool shit, like making masks and giving them to first responders, or fucking you know, I mean, what's his face at the falafel hut over here? Is who's a general badass good guy? Yes, you seen? Yeah, making food and sending food all over the fucking place. Like I, got, one of my neighbors dropped off like three heads of lettuce. She's like, we went down and we're hanging over the scene, and he was like, you know, here take this, give it to your friends and neighbors, and he gave him like a fucking bug, big box of like fresh produce cost him like 22 bucks right and she was she was she was driving down the street and i was working out i was cleaning up in the front yard or something like that she's like hey you want some lettuce okay she was like hey i was over and she told the story and i was like that's that's pretty cool i don't really i wish you could find somebody that needed it but it's fucking lettuce so i'm gonna eat it i mean what yeah. are you gonna do we just give it to the people that don't need it <laughs> that, that's, that's one thing I'm, I'm kind of curious to to figure out is there has been that big issue you know there's been New stories of, of farmers that are literally just throwing all their crops out to waste. Yeah, I heard a story and I, of it. I assume it's more they, they don't have the money to pay the logistics to get it to no, certain they can't people s- that aren't paying. No, the farmers don't. The farmers don't. They sell the product, and then the company right. comes and picks it up. So, like, there's one with onions. Guy's like, I got a field of onions I'm dumping because he's like, I cannot sell it for a dollar a pound. Like logistics are down and then there was the milk one is it logistics or is it the demand because i mean there it, well I grocery think the, stores so I, think the, I think those empty. Go, so, i mean people i don't think people are buying less per se well but i think there's there's two parts is there there is a there is a significant there's been less of the demand as far as like industrial you know like, ca- like school cafeterias like yeah and you've got yeah restaurants that are dying off i guess yeah that's probably the main part of it well i mean that's a big part of it and um you know, I mean, like if you if you if you have a, a, a an onion farm or whatever, and you've got a you've got a short list of, of buyers generally. I mean, you probably have a long list that you can kind of dig down into, but for the most part, you've got like two or three major buyers. Right. And if one of your major buyers, like if you're a, if you're a potato farmer and you have the specific breed of potato that is the McDonald's French fry, <laughs> and McDonald's sales are down. <laughs> I, you may be, I mean, that one specifically, you may be contracted to only sell it to McDonald's and you're right. fucked. But, you know, even if you're not, you know, you harvest every year That's and your entire kind of harvest goes like, into is, the McDonald's. Is not, contracts not, or not to, uh, you know, say you're an idiot, but um, that it was the worst food example you could use. What, the McDonald's potatoes one? Yes. I don't think so. No, it absolutely don't they is. have like a specific potato that they use that's like yes. genetically their and potato? Potatoes the whole United States you have you have two in um late September Right in the black potatoes you, you don't have fry, right? the Norcotas that come out. Um in October you have the uh, Burbank, which is what's the most popular come out. That's the year. Throughout the year there are no other potatoes grown throughout the year. Those potatoes that come out in September, October are harvested. They're put in a warehouse, 
and <laughs> McDonald's will contract with the company for so many pounds or whatever, and uh, that's it. So the coronavirus has nothing to do with how many potatoes are still are in sitting a in a warehouse from from whatever. Well, now, I mean, if you're talking about different produce, has... uh, I, could, I could agree with you. I was just I was just being a dick in the case of well, potatoes I mean, only still, harvested once a year. You could still run the game of like, well, the uh, well, no, because they're not in a harvest to dump them right now either. So I guess you're right. No, they're just sitting. They're sitting uh, black. Where and when I first got in the food service business, I was like, "What the fuck?" I figured people would be growing those all year. Nope, it's a it's a once a year crop that comes up. Um, the crazy thing I think was milk. Like there was, there was one farm. And I was watching a video, and it was you saw their milk pumping farm or whatever, and there was a river of milk, and it was flowing out into the creek out there, and he said nobody's buying milk i don't have any i can't get anybody to buy my milk and he's like we can't stop milking a cow right you can't stop milking the cow right it'll stop producing yeah so he's like the only choice we have is to just dump it and it was it was a literally a river of milk and it's like it was like forty seven thousand gallons he was dumping it was like it's crazy that but a lot of the thing is you know keeping up with the, the food service side is like the meat thing there are farmers and there i've seen a bunch of videos that are like we ha-, you know standing in the field with a bunch of guys like we have the cattle we can't get anybody to buy them they're like talk to your local farmers you can buy this stuff it's there's not a shortage of meat right now but the problem is you only have four processors in the united states exactly that's, that's right. what we i talked about that last week yeah i mean yeah. like low, low in processing amount so those those processors stop you know you know, you got Tyson who, you know, for whatever reason was like, oh, we got three people that came down with coronavirus, shut down the manufacturing. Now you got 25% of the... It was a hell of a lot more than that. But, go ahead. but it doesn't yeah, matter. I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying. But the, so you have these processors shut down. And if, if you know, even if one of those processors shut down, these farmers have nowhere yeah, to sell this. Throws meat. off the supply chain. Yeah. If you are a major processor. Right. That's what we talked about last week, though, is that is... Um, why are there only four processors? There's there in 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 a in fair market discussion. There's got to be there's got to be an outstanding reason on why there's only four processors. I understand that you get to scale. I would guess there's more, but ma- four major company that are processing. Well, there there there. Well, but there's got to be a competitive like, game you know, to have a Tyson, smaller processor. Like, you've heard of IBP, right? You never heard of IBP, major. Um, Meat International processor. will be a beef. International yeah, beef processors. Um, they got bought out by Tyson. You know, you have Cargill. So I was about to say, you've you probably have, got like, major corporations that are just major buying people up. people buying. Tyson owns all sorts of shit. You know, it's like these people are buying out. And you, you don't have a monopoly because there's four. You can't have a monopoly with four. But for, for all intents and purposes, it's fucking monopoly. All right. So the, the question being is, so a smaller processor cannot functionally compete. Um, I would you, say so. you can compete. Um, there are smaller processors out there, um, but some of these smaller processors, um, they get the meat that they are further processing from those people. Right. So they are selecting a few products from those big companies and further processing them, aging them, doing stuff, doing other things, but they're not into the buying raw cows slaughtering them processing them and then the smaller companies that are out there are like we cannot we cannot compete with with tyson on you know run-of-the-mill ground beef so what are we going to do okay we got to have a niche we've got to deal with um smaller farms or you know fully integrated farms right and having having a story to tell of why you are why well, you can demand three dollars more a pound for your product? Well, because one of the things I was re- well, one of the things I was reading on it is that there's um, some particular EPA and or not EPA but FDA um, safe practices whatever in place that makes it harder uh, harder or more expensive for a smaller processor to stay legal. Um, and that's one of the reasons that, I mean, I'd say a lot of it is capital. I mean, I saw a little documentary, it was on like Tyson and it was more going down to their, uh, I guess like chicken 
growers per se to where essentially you know those chicken farmers are buying the chicks but to where Tyson essentially owned those chicks it's a, it almost kind of came into like a sharecropper type thing yeah to where Tyson was providing the the raw baby chicks or the raw eggs that, that you then had to incubate incubate and then you know produce into viable chickens you know they want you to have right cuz they're trying to, they're trying to control their supply line cuz they want the right chickens that turn into the right chicken products on the other side it, and i'm not I mean, I'm, I, I, I could say that they were doing that i think it was more in, in a way to control the market and control that supplier i mean where else are you going to go from What's that, when so, you got two companies to choose from to buy your chicks and you've got this company that says hey we'll provide these chicks if you buy them at this price and you just grow them and then we'll come pick them up when you piss off that one supplier, if you've got four suppliers to choose from, yeah, I mean, a chickens are a chickens are a good example because you have like you know Tyson and uh, they're producing chickens, and so a uh, forty pound case of chicken is going to cost you forty five dollars, fifty dollars, something like that for a random sized chicken breast, and then you have somebody like. Sp- Springer Mountain, who's in Georgia, which is a lot smaller company, and it's like, how are they going to compete with them? So what what those guys do is they're selling their chicken breasts for right around the same price, 40, 45 pounds, but it's not a 40-pound case of chicken. It's a 20-pound case of chicken. So then they're going out and telling a story. They're like, uh, Springer Mountain, it's, you know, organic or free range or, you know, a story on why they're fully integrated or they know all the farmers that are pretty, you know, and so they have to tell a story to get a higher price out of that stuff. But when you go to the grocery store, what are most people buying? You're looking and you're like, Oh, chicken. Uh, how much? I mean, I would guarantee most people don't even look what per pound they're paying. They look at a pack of chicken and they're like 14 99. Okay. Huh? <clears throat> that seems fair. I'll, I'll get that. I mean, most people are not even looking at when they, when it comes to beef, whether they're buying select or choice or prime or any of that stuff. Most people are like, I got to feed my family. I got 15, <clears throat> I got 15 bucks. What 15 can I buy? bucks. I'm going to buy that. And so when it comes to Walmart or Kroger or any of these places, what are they going to buy? They're going to buy from these big guys because it's cheaper product and their customers don't know that there's a difference in the quality they're buying. So that's plus, why. Plus when I cook it at home, I don't have the skills of a pro cook and have a chef. So, yeah. yeah. I cooked a rib. Everybody adds salt and pepper. Right. I cooked a filet for my wife. And you, you want to cheat? Ribeye for me tonight. Choice. Delicious. You want to cheat? It's just butter, butter, more butter, butter, extra mm-hmm. butter, butter, add some butter and extra butter. Put some blue cheese on it. Oh, I need to get some blue cheese. Oh, nice. Mm. I need to do that, but I need to. <laughs> but um, I don't know. Like I, I just, I don't know. My my gut reaction is I there's there's, it's got to be more than just the size of the four, that are competing them out, other than the story. Because well, I, I'm just saying, I would argue the story is the only way to. To because you cannot compete with price. Because I think it's I think one of one of the issues I think is it's the it's how integrated we are and how distance doesn't matter anymore. You know I mean you know what's the I don't know, like the, whatever Springer Mountain in Georgia is probably closer than the nearest Tyson plant. That might be false, it, but no, it is. Um, you know, and so that Tyson's volume makes up for their cost in getting it there. I can I can get behind that premise, but you know how many chicken farms are in east tennessee no idea you know i mean like i just feel like it, you could you could with with a with a really good like direct infrastructure with what you're doing as a processor you could put a good low cost item on the shelf that's comparable to a tyson version of it no you can't i just i i'd i'd, I'd I have a hard time without without something else in place to to adjust the but the you market can't because like you know when you're a big company and you're buying you know fifty million pounds of feed for your chickens versus somebody buying a thousand pounds of feed, their cost is higher. Right. You know, so your your cost to produce an eight ounce chicken breast is going to be more 
than what Tyson can do. So even if you set them side by side and they tasted different, I mean, you know, it, it, it's sad, but people don't understand the quality. I people agree. People will go to Ruth Chris and they're paying for a prime steak and they're paying $47 for that steak when they can go to Pete's Place in Manderville and get a choice steak for $15. And it's this probably episode brought to you by Pete's Place in Manderville. By Pete's Place in Manderville. <laughs> Um, ask for Keith when you go out there, but I'm a Nick Ultra. Um, <laughs> but you know, you can get good, good steak, but it's, it, it's kind of like, you know, you, you have people expect that there. And I don't think the average grocery consumer understands <coughs> the difference in quality. So if you are a Kroger or Walmart, what's cheapest right. you can buy? Well, that's what I'm saying about it. I think that this part, the, I think Kroger and Walmart are part of the, part of the integration that, we as a customer base have grown accustomed to and that's part of it's on the customer for sure and i get in trouble with with sam a lot when i blame things on the consumer ac gets mad at me too um but i think there's i think there's i I don't know i just feel like there's i i I feel like there's a way there's got to be a way to do it better where it's competitive um other than telling a story um, I, th- I, I, I just feel like there's, there's, you know, and it goes, I mean, it goes into the the bigger picture and the coronavirus issues with like the masks and shit like that, which, um, Sam and I've talked a bit about like, like, well, the Dr. Briggs, Burks, Dr. No, Dr. The, no, the one that just testified that, that just testified about how, oh, he, right. Yeah. Like he's, he was a whistleblower and he was complaining that he got, uh, dismissed from his job because basically he was going against the president's plan or whatever and calling him out for being stupid, which is fine, whatever. But, um, you'd mentioned that like the, some imported somehow through government systems, they imported five fifty a mask where this guy's company was offering like 96 cents or something like That's that. That's a different guy, but it was part of that testimony series. So it was part of that. It was a part of that, that daily's I'm trying to remember the, the name of the subcommittee. The congressional subcommittee, right? Because was, the, the guy, the, the right? Time, yeah, the the guy that was making masks in yeah, Texas. I think, or I think in that whole day, I, I want to say it was like eight, eight or twelve hours. They had two people, right? I was saying like that that this. I mean, this shifts totally off of the food production thing, but the premise. <laughs> well, we of, go everywhere anyway, right? But the premise that that they were paying five <laughs> something versus five something for an imported mm-hmm. mask or whatever. Against a like an eighty cents domestically produced version of it, that's that's fucking gross. I mean, w- would you not disagree that the price goes up when demand goes up? I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to to justify it. I'm just saying that. Well, that's, no, that's 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 normal. what the global market was saying. That all of a sudden, when you've got a literal right, but- global market that is looking for masks. Those producers are going to jack up their fucking prices right. regardless. We did it with these. I mean, because we had to. We couldn't right. keep enough in the store. And so, I mean, literally to try to slow down, you know, like instead of doing the, the grocery store, you can only buy two chicken items at a time. We did a, you're going to pay more for it to get you to buy to right. to buy less at a time so that it's more available for more people. Right. A great example is this week, you know. What do we do Monday and Tuesday not having them? And what do we do right. the rest of the week? Right. I argue that's our Facebook presence too. Like legitimately. I would it's just, we'll do that off air. That's a separate conversation. But I don't know. Like I just like <clears throat> AC's brought it up to me outside the show. Um Sam and I have talked about it a little bit. I don't know that Max and I have ever really discussed it. But, you know, this globalization issue of, you know, we're in the middle of this pandemic and shit's getting sideways and nobody can get a fucking mask. Whether the CDC tells us we should or shouldn't have one, they'll change their mind tomorrow. We'll figure it out. Um, whether anybody should or shouldn't have a mask and people are clamoring to get them and China just stops shipping for a little bit and keeps them in-house because they need them and we're freaking out about it, which is fair. And so everybody, you know, we're on the Buy American kick again, mm-hmm. um, which we've done a couple times in my lifetime, at least I remember. It's like, oh, Buy American. And it's like, look for the flag on your on your on your thing and it's like okay that's cool i'm I'm totally down with that 
but when it gets into the big super complex, thank you, AC, um, you know, how super complex it is and the way things are is you have to make it, you have to make it, it has, there, 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 there is a reason why U S products are not competitive pricing generally. There's a reason why U S products do not compete on the world stage when we produce things other than content. Content wise, we rule the planet, our movies, our TV shows worldwide. I mean, we steal all sorts of shit from the UK, but, um, like Hollywood is the, is like the number one export of the United States <clears throat> as well, far as yeah. actual and, and earning in foreign cars would be a lot more expensive. I mean, would be a lot cheaper than what we buy them here, but we have, um, taxes on those companies that import these cars to make them more right to try to give our cars a chance to compete exactly and and, and that to me that's uh, like you know i'm sure there's economists out there that have tackled the issue and i probably should find some and read them but i mean like it, there's 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 something inherent in the united states system that effectively costs us out of competing on a world stage in production and if we're going to sit here and go buy American, buy American, it's like, you know, same thing with the chicken thing. At some point, there is a line when I'm going shopping for whatever the fucking thing I'm going shopping for. It's like, I can't pay that much. I'm not willing to pay that much if they're comparable products. But I mean, fuck, I mean, if, if it's if it's comparable in price, the U.S. product usually doesn't compare in quality or the U.S. product that compares in quality is significantly more expensive. And that's just the that that is reality with mm-hmm. with most of the market right now. And it's like I would be more than happy to try to put forth effort to buying American made goods, but for fuck's sake, how can I mean, justify why it's more expensive, and help me figure out why it is that way and what we can do to fix that? Because it's I mean it's it's labor pricing. It's I mean it's not it, it's not logistics because if we can fucking ship a iPhone from from China all the way here and be cheaper than some US phone manufacturer that makes it next door. It's not the logistics that are the problem. What is the problem that makes this shit so much more expensive? Why is it so much more expensive to make things in the United States? I, I did hear something mentioned as far as like with the mask with the the gentleman that was testifying before Congress the other day that kind of surprised me when he was talking so about polite gentleman. The gentleman that was testified before Congress. That motherfucker. I try to be respectful when I can. Uh, it's something that kind of surprised me when he was talking about the uh, availability and, I guess, production of, of a mask. He was a a local, out of Texas, based out of Texas, but he was a, a mask producer that was making, I think, either a surgical grade or N95 grade. I'm not exactly sure which one, probably both. But uh, he was saying that about half of the the market came from China. Where would you guys guess the other half came from? India. Mexico. Mexico, which is when, a lot when, closer than China. Right. But he, he was kind of saying it was more when he was testifying more about the, I guess he'd been pushing the American government for trying to bring some of manufacturing back to the U.S., in the case of pandemics, so he'd been doing this. I think he said he'd been trying to lobby for that for the past like 13 years when we've gone through, you know, two or three other, you know, semi world pandemics. Saying yeah, that, hey, but, if this shit ever happens again, like, we're going to need fucking masks. I mean, and we're I agree. not producing them here in the U.S., and that could be a major problem when we go to try to source these. Right. I agree. That's a, like a, for, for national defense purposes, for, you know, for, for our United States best interest, it is a problem to have to import all these things, but it doesn't change my question. Like why, why is it China and Mexico? Wait, gonna talk about that. And it was, I guess it's more than that. With the whole uh, no, buying not. from America, he was saying that he's, you know, he's talked to some hospitals, I guess some of his major suppliers are some of the, local Texas hospitals in his area. He was saying, you know, they, they've had, and other hospitals that he's talked to have said, like, hey, yes, we do want to buy more American, but for the price, we're still going to buy from China. 
Yeah. It, it all comes down to a budget. They can produce it cheaper. They can, they can do it cheaper. Exactly. And that's what it, it comes it, it, down to. I mean, I mean we, were, nothing... we were talking about consumers. I mean, it all comes down to the person that's having to buy that, and they're looking. They've, right. they've got a budget. Right, and healthcare gets so. healthcare gets weirder because the insurance bomb and stuff like that, and labor is definitely probably the lion's share of it. But I mean, another one you got um, you got EPAs and 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 um, environmental regulations that China and Mexico don't follow the same way we do, and you know whether you agree with global warming and why it's happening or not or whatever. If they're not on the same playing field as us, with their um, environmental reasonings and environmental regulations, then is, we can't compete I, there. I'm confused on that statement. What is like making an iPhone expensive or cheaper? How does global warming have anything to do with it? That's you lost me on that. Well, in production, whether they have, um, I mean, I don't know. Like, okay, so, so they're going down the rabbit hole. So of some of their plant does not follow pollution things i mean sure shit doesn't follow like osha guidelines and other stuff like that but pollution wise yeah um whether it's directly in the iphone plant or the sourcing of the plastics and the metals (coughs) whether the plants that are producing the plastics and the metals that are using the iphone that are also in china are pumping out all sorts of co2s or um you know carbon monoxides or whatever the fucking shit like that is i mean it goes all i mean all the way down the supply chain wherever they're sourcing their base products to make the final iPhone isn't following the EPA regulations that are required here. It's not like we're shipping them all the, I mean, we do on some, we do with some in some of the food processing stuff. We like ship animals over there. They process them and ship them back sometimes. Not as often, but we sell a lot of, I don't know. That's not the point. My point being, I was staying on the iPhone one is that they don't have the same um, employee regulations. They don't have the same cost of employees for sure. Um, they don't have the same environmental regulations. They don't have all the, I mean, there's a whole mountain of shit that they don't have the same animal that we have to deal with here, which is, again, that's, that's the main reason why it's more expensive here. And I get that, but the solution being we cut all the regulations out of the way, which my libertarian brain says yes to, um, or we try to force our regulations on other people. And then that's a problem too. So how do we, I mean, I guess the question is, we agree that labor is a big part of it. Um, I think that's the majority of part of it. I, I'd say it it's all a, comes down to labor. I, I well, I mean, well, I mean, it, on your global warming thing, it absolutely comes down to labor. So they have to pay somebody to filter this stuff out. They don't want to pay that. That in the United States pays that. It all has to do with how much you're paying somebody to do a job and what you're willing to pay for doing a job. I mean, yeah, if you want to look at it that way, yeah. I mean, it's just. The total it's cost the of the cost of to produce that product is cheaper in other countries, right? You know, and that's why half Man. of these puff bars, well, not half of these, ten percent of these puff bars don't work because they have eight year olds in China producing them, right? And, and and there's a lot of companies that that do mm-hmm. weigh that option and decide to pay the fines based on OSHA FDA regulations that it's cheaper for them to pay those fines versus revamping their business right to oh, uh, uh, adhere to those and a great example of like personal experience of like paying for something like that um i got a buddy who uh was in marine Corps with he's a detective in la east la actually uh, marquez how you doing buddy i know you're listening to this episode um somebody so, in california's listening uh, we we were talking and uh he said uh hey i was like, I was like well, what kind of detective are you and he was like oh i'm on uh, the drug task force, and I said, "So is it made you with the whole marijuana thing legalized in California made your job easier?" He's like, "Oh, actually, that's that's what I do is cannabis." And I was like, "So you don't have a job anymore? Like, you're cannabis enforcement, and it's legal." And he's like, "Yeah, California did not when California legalized marijuana, they did not look at any of the other states." how they legalize marijuana. They just legalize marijuana. So if I want to open up a dispensary in California, there is all these fees and permits and shit you have to pay, which is super expensive. But if I don't pay those and I just open up 
uh, dispensary, the only fine they can give you is like if I set up on the corner of, you know, Hollywood and 7th, whatever it is, and started selling flip-flops. And they were like, oh, you don't have a business license. You can't sell flip-flops here. And it's a fine. And so he said, the problem is we'll go in dispensary and be like, oh, you not, you don't have a business license to sell marijuana. He's like, we fine them. And he's like, I'll go to court. And the guy's like, uh, so you've closed 15 of my shops. And then the guy will come in and be like, what do I owe? You want me to write you a check? What, $100,000 $100, fee? Because it's cheaper for him to just pay the fee. And then tomorrow, go open up 15 more shops in another place. Go around, get busted, pay the fee because it's right. not. Because California didn't go around. He's like, that's all I do is chase people selling flip-flops. Hmm. Writing a, a citation. Then they have to go to court and pay the fee. And then they go right back out there. So it, it's it's all legislation and, and, and stupid stuff. So people... People weigh that. Companies weigh that. You know, they're like, what is it going to cost me? Do I just want to pay this and go on? I mean, right. we've joked about it in our business about, eh, and do we just go till we get caught? Because when we get caught, it's just a warning. So, well, 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 what's the second offense? Well, the second offense is $1,500. Okay, what's the third offense? Third offense, we're going to shut you down. Okay, so we can go till we have two warnings. Basically, you know, like, and, and, and as a business person, you, you look at that stuff, you, yeah. you, you right, especially about, when you, especially when that case, <coughs> excuse me, when you don't agree with the regulation put in place anyway. Oh, absolutely. You know, and it's not, it's, you disagree with whether it's for the greater good or not. <coughs> oh, <excuse me. coughs> oh, there it was. It's fucking Corona, man. We got some, oh, so yeah. much Corona. Right here. Here. Ah. Uh, just don't put me on a ventilator. I'll die. Yeah, don't do that. I thought put I was doing good, and, like quitting smoking. <laughs> you guys are making me start to wonder. <coughs> it's um, that kind, mine, but he's been smoking. Mine's alcohol related, but um, alcohol. But no, I, I mean, again, it's like okay, so we seem to have a consensus on what the issue is, but what do we do about it? I mean, what is what is logically done about it, other than trying to trot around the world, which we already trying to kind of try to do as a nation in our in, uh, um, implementing our standards on other people you know i mean short of like saying you know apple you have to you're you have to enforce in another country our employment laws on your company it's not gonna happen and, and i know and it's just like so uh, so but i think we tried to do that when there was the whole big thing with kathy lee and sweatshops in southeast asia right I think somehow I don't know if it was more of those companies trying to say that hey if if you're going to be a sweatshop we're not going to buy from you I don't know if that was the kind of clout we held over them I mean I think I think a lot of that was just like the the public awareness of it which I think that that animal is that that ship has sailed for lack of a better word is because I mean it is it is well known I don't know if you guys know this one but like the uh, I can't remember the factory still going on it's just pushed to the back of everybody else's mind at this point. I don't think, I mean, I, I don't know if the, 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 I can't remember there's a name, like it's a, the, the company that Apple contracts their phone manufacturing to, like all of their windows have netting outside of it. Cause people keep trying to jump out their fucking windows while they're working. I've heard that shit. Is that, that is real. S- Snope it. <laughs> Why? We don't believe in Snopes anyway. Mm-hmm. No, that is real. They do that. They've, they've they've had so many people trying to kill themselves while working at the Apple factory, and it, and it persists to this day. But they put fucking nets up so you just get tangled up, and I don't know if you get fired. I don't know what happens to you if you try to kill yourself at work and fail. But I mean, you're alive. You're fired. <laughs> you know, what do you? I mean, you know, and that's it's a fairly well known thing. But yet at this table, there's three iPhones. Well, do they do they give them like? Oh, that's China. I was gonna say Japan. In Japan, they just give them uh, directions to the suicide forest. Right. Yeah. Uh, creepy. Um, <laughs> but you know, I mean, like, so but even it, even if the even if the United States said, okay, oh, hey, Apple, you can't be making iPhones. If you're going to make iPhones in the sweatshops, they can't be sold in the United States. Well, see, that goes. What to, would happen? That goes we to me. We'd all go to DH Gate and buy our fucking iPhones over there. Like, right. There'd be a workaround on and it. And not paying taxes. Like, right. You know, and but like. 
and that goes to that goes to my that's my argument where I will blame a consumer. We as a consumer are comfortable with that idea, whether you, whether you think about it or not. I own an iPhone, and I am comfortable with the idea that most of the people that built my iPhone have tried to kill themselves while they're at work. <coughs> well, it's it's. I don't know if it's. Uh, I don't know if most of the people, some of the people. Is it uh, you're comfortable with, or it's like uh, you can't do anything about it. You know, I'm I mean, I could, I could not, I could not buy an iPhone. I could find some U.S. phone manufacturer, which doesn't exist, because they can't compete. So we're, your quality. We're, we're spoiled then, and we want, we want it, and so we just turn a blind eye. I mean, I think it's the same thing with the chicken. Well, conver- yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with our chicken conversation. I mean, I think, I think part of that onus is on us. Is we aren't willing to pay more, or we are not willing as a society to do the things to make it competitive to buy something here. Yeah, I mean, there are videos that have come out showing the horrendous, you know, chicken growing. I mean, everybody wants a large chicken breast. When you try to picture those large chicken breasts on an actual like chicken walking around, like I have chickens, that chicken looks fucking fucked and, up. And, and a lot of people think it's it's, it's hormones. There, I mean, since the nineteen seventies, it's been illegal to um, use hormones in chicken. And Purdue, oh my God, Purdue, their marketing team. Whoever does their fucking marketing team, they need to give them motherfuckers a raise because about two, three years ago, Purdue came out and they were like, "Hormone free chicken." Right. That's been a rule for a long time since the seventies. You've <laughs> not been allowed to put hormones in chicken. It's United States, no hormones. But they came out with this whole marketing thing, hormone free chicken, and it was like, "Oh my god, I gotta get Purdue chicken because they're horm- all chickens hormone free." But the the thing is, they've just bred these chickens, you know, and they've crossbred them. They bred them. They bred them. So they have these these you know they're you know meat birds right. is what you call them. My chickens are egg laying birds. They don't have fucking hardly any breasts on them. Right. So it's it's all it's all breeding these chickens. But people are okay with that. I mean, it's kind of it's sad to say, but it, yeah, okay I think a it. lot of people are like, eh, there's nothing you can do about it. So, you know, I think, I, I think it's a, some complacency and some just want to put that in the back of their mind. I mean, there was a big uproar with meat and when some of those videos came out and I think there's been, you know, the anti-gag laws that have come out of private investigators yeah, that's of people. Up. Yeah. Well, it's just like the, 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 was it pink slime that chicken tenders were made of? And it's like, whatever. But, um, I was, for the longest time, I was an anti-organic, like, organic chicken, organic beef, organic vegetables, like, I was like, you're stupid, dude. That's hippie bullshit. I don't wear fucking Birkenstocks and hug on trees. I'm not fucking, organics fucked up. And then, being in the food business, trying shit, trying organic chicken next to regular chicken. And if you have a, if you eat, uh, an organic chicken breast next to a Tyson chicken breast. The funny thing is, is everybody is like, it tastes like chicken. Well, it's all chicken, but it tastes like chicken. Chicken, grocery store chicken does not taste like chicken. Right. And then when you have an organic breast, you're like, fuck, this tastes like chicken. And so it, it's funny and, and doing organic and, you know, we've been doing it. We, we, our garden's organic. We're doing a lot of stuff that's organic, and it's crazy that the the quality of products you get out by not using chemicals and shit like that is is pretty damn good. Nice. I've been turned in. You've been turned into a hippie. I'm fucking gonna be wearing patchouli oil, hippie. and then I'll jump off that apple building. I mean, I don't know when the last time I've seen you wear shoes is, so you're getting pretty fucking close. Yeah, I have not worn shoes. I mean, it was like 40 degrees a couple weeks ago when we were here, and you were in shorts and fucking flip flops. That's what I wear. Fucking all the time. hippie. This happens when you get retired. Okay, so that's just the way it is. That's the solution to why America can not compete in production. I don't think that. I mean, I don't think that there's. The problem is you're going to have. Somebody else that's going to want to do it for cheaper and that are willing to cut some corners. And there's not enough people that want to make it. Like you can say, I want to buy American. Or, I mean, great example. If you ask anybody, do you support lo- sm- local small business? Do you do you want to, you know, everyone's Walmart. like, yeah, yeah, I want, I want. But then they're going to go fucking Walmart. They're going to buy shit because why? It's simple. 
if there was an egg store, a beef store, a milk store, a fucking cereal store, you're not going to go around to all these people and buy that shit because as Americans, at the end of the day, we're fucking lazy. We want to get it all in one stop. That's why you can buy fucking a bed, a nightstand, motor oil, get your tires changed, and your milk all in the same fucking place. Right. So, it has just we're lazy. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. All right, well, that sounds like a, a, a good finale this episode. You're all fucking lazy. All two and a quarter of you are good. The numbers are going up, and we appreciate all two and a quarter of you. For listening, this is episode 10 of Almost in Agreement. Um, good night. We're going to be back. We're going to do a, a, a bonus episode. AC is back in town. Um, and AC we'll, in the house. And we'll do another one tomorrow. So this will this will release on Sunday the 17th. And um, we'll probably have another follow-up coming on Monday or Tuesday. Um, we appreciate you all for listening. Hit us up on Facebook. Um it's almost an agreement on Facebook and or leave comments of the videos. We're on YouTube in almost an agreement as well. Good night, everybody. <laughs>